Well, joining me on the line now is uh, Gerald Salente, the publisher of the Trends Journal. And Gerald, I thought seeing we're well and truly into autumn here, you'd be well and truly into spring over there, but your Trends Journal for spring's not out yet. No, it's not out, uh, but it'll be out shortly. We just actually finished it up this weekend, and it'll be out in about a week or so. Given the fact that winter is still in the air over there, it's not really spring, is it? So it's been a pretty tough winter. This is the coldest winter I ever remember, and it's probably one of the worst springs. And does that have any cost to the U.S. economy? Are people factoring that in and saying, well, this is unusual? Could this be climate change? Now, they don't talk about climate change here. If you talk about it, then they call you a, uh, a conspiracy theorist. You're not allowed to talk about climate change. But I can tell you this firsthand. People are really suffering from paying their electric bills and gas bills. They're skyrocketing. Well, Gerald, a similar thing has been happening here in Australia. Uh, we privatised a lot of our power companies uh, here, and although we were told that we would get lower prices, it seems that they've just been going up over time, and a lot of people here are uh, using solar panels on their roofs as a way of offsetting that. Yeah, well, it's it's not happening here with the solar, and and the other thing, too, is that's exactly what happened here. These used to be public utilities, but they've gone private, and the multinationals uh, are really taking advantage of it. But on the positive side, uh, Gerald Salente, there was a lot of uh, news here about jobs growth and, and saying that the uh, jobs growth in March in America was one of the best they'd seen for a long time, uh, almost 200,000 jobs, according to the Labor Department data. Is that a, a good sign? Obviously good for those people who picked up the jobs. Look what happened after the number came out. You saw the NASDAQ go down 1.5%. The Dow lost about 150 points. Today it's down 166 points. The NASDAQ is down another 1.6%. And you're looking at all the markets, the Asian markets, the European markets, all down on the great news of the job numbers. Because when you look behind the job numbers, you know it's a joke. Because the kind of jobs that are created... Oh, the 28,000 of those jobs are temporary jobs. You want a job, in, I love the term, leisure and hospitality. Bartenders and waitresses and people making beds in hotels. Manufacturing barely bounced. Just to put this into perspective, since the Great Recession began in 2008, we've lost 3 million manufacturing jobs and created... 2.2 million jobs in health care. And when I'm talking about health care, these are, these are people, they don't even have to pay them the minimum wage. So that's what's going on in slave land here. So when you look behind the numbers, they're more lousy jobs. And, and by the way, the other fact of this is you need 160,000 jobs a month just to make up for population growth. So we barely have made up the lost jobs since 2008, and the jobs that have been created, they don't pay a living wage. Mm. And then you look at our, uh, our trade deficit, again, that went up as well last month. So this is all, you know, this is not free trade. All this is is what they've done, and it's all global. Manufacturers are getting their products made overseas, and they ship them back and mark up the prices. And you're looking at, by the way, corporate profits right now are at an 85-year high. The fallout of wages is at a 65-year low. Mm. So that's what's going on over here. It's all being concentrated in the hands of a few. The numbers don't lie. On uh, international matters, Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Journal, the uh, Ukraine. Let's have a look at what's happening there. The U.S. is threatening more sanctions as pro-Russian activists are seizing buildings in the eastern Ukraine. Now, this has just been announced. So do you think that Russia takes any notice of these sanctions? And what, what sanctions can they put in place? Well, as you know from getting the Trends Journal, mm. <laughs> that was the cover story in the winter edition was, mm. the, was Ukraine. And we, we wrote about this as it was happening and said it was going to devolve into this. This is the greatest propaganda campaign that I've seen since the Iraq War. You remember Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. 
you could anybody could do this. They could go on to YouTube and type in the name Newland, N U L A N D, Victoria Newland, Assistant Secretary of State of the United States. December 13, 2013, not ancient history. Here she is giving a speech paid for by Chevron. You can see the insignia right over her shoulder. And Chevron had just did a $10 billion deal with Ukraine to do fracking in November. And here she is at the National Press Club telling the world that Ukraine, I, I didn't know this, it's European and it's places with Europe. I always thought a big percentage of the population was also you know, tied to Russia. But what do I know? The Assistant Secretary of State was speaking. And that the best path for them is to follow the path set forth by the International Monetary Fund. Hmm. There she is giving this speech. And this was a overthrow of the government because then you can go in and put her name in as well and put in alongside of it the American ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Pyatt, P-Y-A-T-T. And their phone conversation was tapped and there they are speaking about the overthrow of Yanukovych and putting in quote, yats. Y-A-T-S, that's the guy who's in there now. This whole incident in Ukraine was fomented by the United States, and in her words, not mine, the United States has spent $5 billion behind this. They use, they use the term NGOs, non-governmental organizations, as the fronts for destabilizing Ukraine. So what we have here is one day of propaganda after another. And I've seen this two-bit act before. I'll tell you that, you know, that uh, Putin, he's just like Hitler. I hear it from Hillary Clinton. I hear it from Schwabler, the finance minister from Germany. I mean, he should know. One after another, Tomashenko, the former head of Ukraine that was in jail for her wrongdoings. Any, now that Hitler, everybody picks up the sound bites. They say that Russia invaded Crimea. They did not invade Crimea. They've been there since 1783. They had up to 25,000 troops there. They are not massing troops on the border NBC TV in the States, as well as the New York Times, have gone through the entire regions over there and found absolutely no troop buildups at all. This is a let's hate Russia and let's move NATO closer into Russia, as they have done. What's the end game here? Because NATO says that up to 40,000 Russian troops have been mobilized, so we're hearing these almost rumbling, rumblings of war. Hmm. It's a lie, and it can be war, because you have the same sociopaths and psychopaths that have taken us to war or doing it again. To me, this is reminiscent of what I read in history of World War I. You had a bunch of lunatics that started a war that between Russia, France, and, and other countries, and the U.K. put this scheme together and ended up destroying Europe at a time when it was culturally growing and, and industrializing at a wonderful pace, not in a destructive way, and we haven't stopped since, because then followed by World War II, and now we are on the brink of something much greater. If anybody thinks they're going to stop Russia, what are they out of their minds? If Napoleon couldn't stop them, if Hitler couldn't stop them, you think Hollande, Cameron, and Obama are going to stop them? Russia right now is being threatened by NATO. They're breaking all the agreements that were put in place following the breakup of the former Soviet Union by bringing the, the, the countries that used to be in the Soviet Union into NATO and into the European Union. It would be as though, hey, how's this one? Russian missiles in Cuba. Mm. That's the equivalent. It would be as though now what they want to put in missile systems in Poland, the Czech Republic, they're trying to bring Georgia and Moldova and other countries 
bordering Russia into NATO. So it'd be like Canada and Mexico being occupied by Russia or having a deal with Russia with missiles pointing into the United States. So in other words, this is uh, the Cold War continued and the evil empire. In other words, there's still people in America who want to put an end to the evil empire of Russia. What they want to do is they want the United States hegemony. We did a story in the um, Autumn Trends Journal, and it was called No Need for NATO. And it was written by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who's the former Assistant Treasury Secretary under Ronald Reagan. And he's one of our contributors. And he wrote this story about all NATO is is a front for the United States hegemony. And what this neocon group, what they want to do is they want to weaken Iran, China, and Russia. With those three out of the way, the hegemony keeps spreading. Here we are into the 13th year of the Afghan war. Here we are. Look what's going on in Iraq. Every day you pick up the newspaper, 62 killed, 85 killed, 120 killed. Hey, the world is better off without Saddam Hussein. Do you know what the Financial Times, the New York Times, and the Wall Street Journal's above the fold spread was this last weekend? No. Well, artwork, by, artwork by George W. Bush. Oh, yes, yes. I saw that he'd done a portrait of our former Prime Minister, John Howard. Yes. Yeah, it's like Bonzo learned how to paint. <laughs> this is what they're promoting? What's going on in the world over here? And you know, he should have been learning how to paint this from jail because nobody's brought anybody up on war crime charges. Who knew what when? There were no weapons of mass destruction. There were no ties to al-Qaeda. And now we're hearing the same lies. And again, if anybody's interested in finding out the chronicle of events in Ukraine, what's going on and who's behind it, I would suggest they consider going to Dr. Paul Craig Roberts' website. It's paulcraigroberts.org. He's the former Assistant Treasury Secretary under Reagan. This is a guy, by the way, who could bring in the head of the CIA and question him under oath. Why would someone who was the Assistant Treasury under Reagan, which was a Republican administration, uh, and obviously very anti-Soviet Union, be, uh, be basically sort of blowing the whistle on what's happening now? Well, he was very. They weren't anti-Soviet Union at all under Reagan. What they wanted to do was bring peace about. Right. And he's a and he's a real honorable man. This is a guy that could have been, you know, with the hedge funds or or uh, at any high position with any of the equity firms, financial institutions. And this is a man that can't be bought out. And when again, when you read his work, you can see it comes from the heart, and and as well as the knowledge. He is, I would say, he's probably the most knowledgeable person about geopolitics and economics that I follow. And he's worried about the uh, the rumblings of war. He is very concerned about it. He, what he's saying is that this could be, as I put it as well. You know, they say that uh, Einstein's famous quote. I don't know how World War Three will be fought, but I do know that World War Four will be fought with sticks and stones. And that's what you're looking at. You're looking at wars of, you know, biological warfare. You know, we're looking at weapons of mass destruction, cyber wars. You know, this, this is nothing to fool around with. Mm. This isn't fighting Iraq and the Afghans. These are the Russians. You don't poke the bear. <laughs> All right. Well, on that, on that note... We'll leave that and hope that spring brings some hope. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Gerald Salente. Thank you.